getting ready to go on all of your awesome summer vacations, right? I mean, I am getting ready to head on one like in a couple of hours. But before I go, I wanted to share with you what I think are the best budget video travel camera accessories. I got them in this bag right here. Let's crack it open. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Now again, before I open this bag of mysteries, uh, I want you to consider that budget doesn't necessarily mean the cheapest. If you're curious about the cheapest stuff, I've got my very own YouTube channel called Reviewing the Cheapest that you can see right here. Ding! But for me, budget means getting more value than you necessarily paid into it. So again, not the cheapest. So let's crack this sucker open. And this isn't like a what's in my travel camera bag, this is just like the travel accessories that I personally use, which I put in a camera bag because I'm getting ready to go on vacation. So something that I carry along with me everywhere, even though I don't necessarily use it in studio all the time, if you follow me on Twitter, you know what I'm talking about. This is a gray card, so what you can use this for is to properly white balance your camera wherever you are. Normally you can just pop it into auto white balance and get it to make your video look as good as it should because cameras don't know what your eye sees. Like your eye white balances naturally to whatever the lighting source looks like. Cameras don't do that. So you gotta tell it what right looks like. This tells it what right looks like and these are cheap. I mean, you can. I think I found this for like two or three bucks on Amazon. Okay, now this is not necessarily an accessory, but this is my 2015 MacBook that I just got fixed. Hooray, this will be, I have iPad OS installed in my iPad, which I've been using, but it's kind of like there's some bugs in it that don't let it be like a full solution yet, so we're not using it yet. So this is the inside of my camera bag. Now let's talk, you make a lot of videos, right? So if you're traveling, right, you're probably gonna be outside. So the biggest thing you need is an ND filter. Now I'm a big fan of variable ND filters. Now what variable ND means is you can see right here, as you twist it, the amount of light is decreased. So you can change it, you can either have it let a minimal amount of light in, or you can really close it off. Now I'm a big, big, big fan of variable ND. You then don't need to bring a whole bunch of them, you just bring one, and I buy the cheapest ones I can find on Amazon. I know I catch flack for that in the comments that I should buy one good one and then use stepper rings, but I don't. I like buying cheap ND, it's a habit of mine. Number two, if you're out and about, you wanna record those family memories, you wanna make your travel YouTube videos, you're gonna have a lot of stuff that you're gonna to need to back up. So you need some kind of external storage drive. Now whether you use a G drive like this, now the reason I use this one is it has a Thunderbolt 2 connector on it, so it gives me a little bit more speed when I connect it to my ancient 2015 MacBook over there. But you could also use something like one of these LaC drives uh, that's USB-C and could very easily plug into a newer Mac or I guess Windows, who uses Windows, right? They're not the fastest, but you can get a lot of storage into it. This is a one terabyte drive that I just carry with me everywhere because it's rugged, it's durable. I've used this for two years now. I've been using this thing for a very long time and it just, it's durable, it's reliable. It just lets me store everything so I don't fill up all of my SD cards, which we'll get to in a second. And it lets you just have it in a nice rugged package. I'm not gonna actually drop it because I don't want to break it on accident. Talking about storage, if you're using something like this ancient, ancient MacBook or ancient computer that has a terrible processor, does not have very much RAM, uh, it has a very small hard drive, I think the thing only has like 128 gigabytes, like my SD cards have that much space. So you may need a way to edit that footage, and that's what this other drive for, this is a Samsung T5 portable solid state drive. We're not necessarily talking about the cheapest, we're talking about budget, and this is a very good, like this costs under 100 bucks, this is 500 gigabytes, and this basically lets you edit video or edit photos like you have that much storage built into your computer. Like these are fantastic. This will increase the usability of your computer. So I absolutely consider these to be an essential budget accessory. When I'm out and about, I don't necessarily wanna be trapped to like one angle at the camera, right? So I use the Rode Wireless Go for a couple of reasons. One, it pairs almost instantaneously with each other. Two, it has a really good Look, check this out, let's watch it pair. And it's paired, already ready to go. So I like it because it pairs instantly, it has a very nice transmission range, and the big thing is it has a built-in microphone. Now I know there's been some problems reported with the Rode Wireless Go where if you plug in a lavalier mic, sometimes it doesn't recognize that you wanna use this microphone again. I never plug a lav into these, so I use these all of the time, and they're very high quality, you get really good audio for very little work, and then you're not like trapped to like right here where the good audio is. Plus it comes with a little cable. Who does not love cables, right? And then another cable to charge it. The one thing I don't like is that there are two separate things, so you have to charge them separately, um, which I know sounds like a little bit of a nitpick, but when you're trying to charge stuff and you only have like 
one USB-C cable, then you gotta remember to unplug one, plug the other one back in, and I'm a forgetful person, I and I forget it all the time. What else we got in here? So I accidentally grabbed the wrong one of these. My other one is downstairs right now, but this is just like a dongle port for a, a MacBook. This gives you more versatility in it with a few more USB drives. It gives you a micro SD port and a regular SD card port. Now this one specifically is USB-C, so it won't work on that MacBook. Um, but I use these all the time to give me more abilities because a lot of times I use like multi-camera shoots. So I like having two SD card ways so I can import files from two SD cards at the same time. Because trust me, you may be like, why would you do that? You just plug one in and then you plug the other one in. And it sounds not very important, but trust me, as somebody that imports a lot of video, every second counts. What else do we have in here? Ooh, we've got USB to USB-C cables. You can never have enough cables, trust me. There's three things that you can never have enough of, and we're gonna cover those. Battery, memory, and cables, because you'll always, I lose cables all the time, or I'll forget to charge something and I need to like, jerry-rig like eight separate things to charge stuff up, and it's super important. We're not necessarily talking about the camera so much, but I will say, depending on your camera system, you may want to bring something that will let you monitor both behind and in front of the camera. If you have a camera like the Canon EOS R, it's very easy because, hey, you can just see it straight from the camera itself. Or, but if you have something like the Nikon Z6 that we're using right now, I have a monitor hooked up like right here so I can make sure that everything looks okay. Um, if you do that, you're gonna need to add some additional pieces and parts in here. I would add something like this small rig cage. Now, I'm not necessarily speaking about the Z6 specifically, but if you use a Sony camera, if you use the new Panasonic full frame camera, being able to have a cage to attach all the stuff to the camera itself makes it a lot easier to transition to being behind or in front of the camera. So cages, very important. That wasn't necessarily for the travel one, but it is. This was an unplanned addition. That's why it wasn't in the bag. So we talked about the three essential things, right? So inside of that, you gotta be able to carry it around, right? So I've got this little case for my SD cards. Now this is supposed to be waterproof. I wouldn't like, throw it in the water, but it's it stood up for me so far in like a little bit of rain and stuff like that, but it just lets you sort and organize your SD cards. I keep all of my empty SD cards on the side without the gasket, and then when they move over here to the side with the gasket, that means they're full and they need to be downloaded into the G drive over here so that you maintain like a, an efficient workflow and you don't forget where things are, but yeah. So it's durable, goes with me everywhere, just works. And power, right? So I always carry around an external battery um, this is one from RAV Power, but what this thing does, which is a benefit to normal, just like external batteries, is this is also a wireless hub for SD cards. So if I'm using my iPad before the iPad OS becomes stable, uh, this is my way to transfer files over to it. Um, you just turn it on and it becomes a wireless hub. You plug in the SD card, you just connect to its network, then you can download all of your files, which is pretty, pretty neat. The nice thing about that MacBook is it has an SD card reader built right into it. I know it's like the future of past. It's like the days of future past that's copyrighted, copyrighted X-Men movie. But yeah, so I really like this thing. I've been taking it with me everywhere since NAB this year, and it always finds its way into my travel bag. We have the charger for the MacBook because power. I always like having stability. I like having some kind of stable shot. Now I will bring the Manfrotto B free with me if I'm gonna be doing a lot of like me talking to a camera from far away, or like I wanna like follow my son around as he's running around, I'll, I'll use that thing. But for just like small quick trips, I just bring this little Manfrotto Pixie. You've seen this in like a whole bunch of videos because it's small, it's very easy to use, it works. It doubles as like a, hey, if I'm gonna be at like a picnic table, it'll stabilize my camera well enough. Um, or if I wanna do like some kind of vlogging or like talking to the camera, it's really easy to use because it's, oh, I just, I have never liked Gorilla Pods. Like straight up, I've never liked Gorilla Pods. I mean, I like them in theory, but I've never been able to really get them to work. This thing just, I really like it. I really like it. We're gonna talk about one more thing real quick, and this is the Andy Scene Vlogger. Now what, I, this isn't like a vlogging camera or anything like that, but what this is, is this is a really versatile mount. Now you can use this to mount like the monitor that we were talking about earlier, straight to the top of your camera if you have a Nikon Sony camera like that. So it'll just go right on the top right here, and you can even like move it around, so if you do end up going behind the camera, it's very like, it's very versatile, it's very usable. But what else you can use this for is, it does have a quarter inch mount on the bottom, so you can actually hook this into a whole bunch of things. Do you have a tripod that you would like to mount your camera to and then move it around? You may not necessarily have a ball head with you, you can use this for that. You can hook it up to anything. You can add a joint in just about any piece of your kit with this thing. This is very, 
very expensive for what you get. I think I paid 30 bucks for this accessory, which is not something that I would normally pay for like a little mount like this, but this thing is so versatile. I bring it with me everywhere. And there will be links to all of this stuff in the description below. But I'm curious, what are your favorite budget travel camera accessories? Because I'm always looking for more stuff to put inside of my camera bag. I, I try to keep it this size so that I don't end up putting too much stuff in, but there's always, there was, you saw, there's space for more. Thanks for watching.